Welcome to SVG TV's News for Wednesday, April the 15th, 2020. I am Bhav Nolver with the details. The impact of COVID-19 on local businesses for the past month has been negative and positive in some regards. This is according to the Executive Director of the Chamber of Industry and Commerce, Anthony Regisford. Regisford told SVG TV News that the local tourism sector had been heavily impacted. However, some hoteliers have been innovative in keeping their business afloat. We've been trying to be very creative in how they manage the staff um, to try to protect as many jobs as possible. Of course, there's some government assistance as far as that is concerned. So it's a, it's a, it's a mixture of what they have at their disposal to use. Um, but the outlook is more worrying because even at this early stage, the hotels have been impacted in a, in a big way but because there's no immediate end in sight um, it's really hard to see when that recovery point is going to be so I want to tell you there's more pain to be felt in that sector. Register said that bars, restaurants and the transport sector are also feeling the effects of the social distancing measure. He, however, noted that there are few businesses which have seen an uptick in their operation, such as the manufacturing companies. If you take a company like ECGC, they manufacture flour, they refine flour, rice, and animal feed. They're also big on export. And they, you know, their story is more of a good news story because their demand has gone up. Okay, it's gone up both on the domestic side, it's gone up on the export side. I don't think that's rocket science because people are trying to stock up with essential food commodities and what they produce, rice and flour in particular, fall right into that category. Um, fortunately, their business is going smoothly uh, in terms of being able to get their products out. Registford used the opportunity to assure the general public that the food supply level remains normal and therefore there is no need to worry about a food shortage at this time. I spoke to, food division. I spoke to Mr. Ford there. He is seeing an increase in his business. Um, he's also taking an administrative decision to stockpile a bit more. Um, so he's carrying a higher level of stock than he would normally carry. Um, I guess that's the safeguard any supply issues down the road, you know. So he's up on about 25% on his stock levels. Um, Chris is a, fa a fairly major distributor um, in the island. Um, some of the wholesale people, Facey Trading, for example, um, they're reporting normal... Um, supply chain issues, well, no issues basically. Meanwhile, Vice President of the Princeton Transport Association, Vintas, Roy Run Adams, said the organization is eagerly awaiting a further meeting with the government officials as they seek to have several issues of concern addressed in light of the threat of COVID-19 and the impact on the service of the members. The association hosted an emergency meeting on Tuesday in which the pending meeting was discussed and the two-week withdrawal of services by members which took effect on Wednesday, April the 8th due to health and safety concerns. Adams told our news team that today that safety and health of members of the association remain the top priority. Number one thing for us is safety. How we manage the exposure of our members, which is owners, operators and conductors. Um, we manage their safety as it relates to COVID-19. Um, and we have also asked to, um, to discuss the underlying stimulus package that was offered um, and to give further consideration to the government. Recently, the government announced a stipend of $250 and $300 as part of a support package to assist omnibus operators nationwide who are negatively impact impacted by COVID-19. Adams said dialogue is the best way to deal with the issues with policymakers and highlighted some of Vinter's concerns with the stipend. 
and like the best approach to negotiation is to have dialogue. Um, we don't want to posture any sort of an adversarial relationship with policymakers. What we want to do is actually be practical, rational about how we conversate with policymakers on um, the issues that are of concern to our members. I think we've articulated those issues well to the policymakers in three different correspondence. Um, and now we are waiting to hear from them. Hopefully we can have that meeting on Thursday and get some semblance of um, progress on those matters. A number of variables surrounding that. And to say, that, to say whether it's enough or insufficient right now would be a bit premature. There's still some work to be done on the number of minibuses that are actually entitled to the subsidy. Until we get that number to a number that is more um, that is more plausible, it would be difficult to assess whether or not the amount of funds allocated to the sector is sufficient or insufficient. And I think those are some of the things we need to work on. Adam said while the withdrawal of service by members of the association is still in place, they are appealing for the patients' understanding from the traveling public. Good, um, good social distancing. We want them to continue to wash their hands and be safe. Wear, wear a mask where possible. One social distancing is not, is not possible. Um, and be patient with us as we try our best to return to work, to return our services to them, um, bearing in mind that operators are frontline workers themselves and do have an interest in making sure that when they go home after work, just like many of us do, that they are not going home and taking a virus to their family. Um, so we want them to be patient. We're working on it. We're, we're, we're open to dialogue with the government. And uh, we hope that we can have this result soon and return to, to work. Because, you know, withdrawing services has an economic impact on all the members as well. So, you know, it, it's, it's not an easy decision. It wasn't an easy decision. And, it, uh, you know, as we continue to dialogue, there are a few things that I believe we can make some progress on that can see us come back to work. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez said there is no need for throwing of words across the Caribbean Sea at this time. The Prime Minister was speaking on Star FM Youth Program yesterday in reference to the response by his Grenadian counterpart, Dr. Keith Mitchell, to a statement he made last Friday to residents of Petit Martinique and Cariacou, who may be experiencing food shortage and cooking gas as a result of the restrictions in Grenada due to the COVID-19. The Grenada Prime Minister deemed PM Gonzalez's statement as unfortunate and irresponsible, to which PM Gonzalez replied in an open letter dated Tuesday, April the 14th, 2020, that Dr. Mitchell's allegations against him were unfounded and wrong-headed. On, and on radio yesterday, Prime Minister Don Gonzalez said his statement addressed to residents of Petit Martinique and Cariacou was misinterpreted by persons whom he said are struck with malice. That he wrote to the Grenadian Prime Minister clarifying every misinterpretation. The letter was sent to the office of the Prime Minister of Grenada, Karakun Piti Martinique, and having been assured that the letter was received, then the letter was re released because okay. the matter to which the letter refers is a matter which was contained in a press release, a press statement, and another statement issued publicly by the distinguished Prime Minister of Grenada. The thing is this, I was concerned about setting the facts right, because mm -hmm. what I think happened is that the, and the letter speaks for itself, what I think happened is that some person stuffed with malice, mm -hmm. <laughs> doctored or sort of truncated the tape. Prime Minister Gonzalez said that the Director of Grenadines Affairs, Edwin Snack, on radio last Thursday, said there were people who were already leaving Karyaku to buy foodstuff and other items from Union Island amidst the shutdown in Grenada due to COVID-19. There are people who are leaving Karakou, mm -hmm. not from Hillsborough, the capital, 
but from the more windward side and from coves mm -hmm. and they would use a short distance by speedboat and come and buy a lot of stuff food stuff um, medicines cooking gas and the like mm -hmm. and uh, of course if the country is locked down that is to say Grenada and uh, people are somehow still leaving Hmm. It means that the situation is not locked down tight as a drum. Mm -hmm. they do a good job at so called locking down. And, and, um, but the point is this what I was interested in is to have a structured, organized manner in which, mm -hmm. if people would like to get any of those commodities, they can get them. In reference to the just concluded Easter holiday weekend, PM Gonzalez said he was advised by Ministry of Health and the Commissioner of Police that persons overwhelmingly complied with the advisory to stay at home. Dr. Gonzalez said the beaches, pools and other tourism sites which persons were advised to stay away from in order to contain the spread of COVID-19 was empty. Thanking all those who complied and stayed at home, the Prime Minister however noted that though they were advised there were two churches which had large gatherings which went against the advisory issued. Um, one of them, I've been advised, had indicated that this was the last church service for the period during the time of COVID. Apparently, persons, more persons decided to go than one would have expected. A small church. And there was another one um, where there was a wedding. And in relation to do the, that particular denomination, I spoke to one of the principal leaders in that church today and asked that the message be reinforced. But in the management of risks, I think it would be correct to say that the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines listened. The National Insurance Services, the NIS, is taking a stakeholder-centric approach as part of measures to mitigate against the impact of COVID-19. So says the Executive Director, Stuart Haynes, during a Facebook Live forum last evening, in which he highlighted measures implemented by the NIS to help members cushion the economic impact caused by COVID-19. Many institutions nationwide have implemented their own measures to encourage social distancing and protect staff and customers from the deadly virus. During a question and answer session, Haynes spoke on what the NIS has done for its staff. From protecting lives, we're actually looking at protecting them and ensure their health and safety. We implemented several measures. They have access to information, access to supplies, we also recruited a nurse to provide medical service during this period. They also have flexible working hours. We also give consideration to parents who, with, with children at home and so forth. And from a livelihood standpoint, we ensure that their income and salary are preserved, but also there's avenue for them to get either salary advance or concessionary loans. Our customer. We also want to ensure our customers are safe. Our customers have access to the nurse we recruit. You can check their temperature on a daily basis if they come into the NIS office. We also have the social distancing protocol where we allow a certain number of customers within our space. Pensioners are most at risk for the coronavirus and Haynes highlighted what is being done to assist them, this group of persons. We also, with our pensioners who, based on studies, are the at-risk group, what we've done, we give early payment of pension, advance pension generally. Pensions are, collect, are paid fortnightly. We do advance payment. The first occurred on 3rd of April, where we paid 
almost 4.8 million to over some 8,000 pensioners, we would make our another payment on April 30th, estimated to be 5 point something million. Right, that payment in advance basically to boost their purchasing power, afford them the opportunity to consume whether medication, whether food supply. We also don't want them to interact too much with the public because 40% of our pensioners still receive payment by checks. So they have to interact with NIS, the post office, then they interact with the bank, supermarket, and so forth and so on. So we want to protect them from that. The NIS executive director said the institution will be doing away with late claims and be more flexible as it relates to sick leave benefits. Importantly, from a livelihood, how are we going to safeguard the livelihood of our customers? We're going to be very flexible, administratively flexible with our sick leave benefits and conditions. For instance, late claims that no longer would exist. We're also going to be flexible in terms of proof of illness. We would receive telephone calls, whether from the Ministry of Health, whether from physician or so forth. We also go into the waiting period. We also going to give consideration to that. Persons in quarantine will be covered. So we very, we're going to be very administratively flexible for our sick leave benefit. The Embassy of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela here in SVG on Tuesday made another donation of medical supplies to the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment to assist the country in its ongoing fight against the coronavirus. Head of the Venezuelan Diplomatic Mission Ambassador Francisco Perez Santana delivered 13 boxes containing the medical supplies which include surgical gloves, sterilized surgical gowns and non-sterile surgical overalls to be used by Vincentian medical personnel in their fight against the coronavirus. Ambassador Perez said everything they do is from their heart, stressing that all the donations are made despite the sanctions and attacks the Venezuelan people are receiving at the moment from the government of the United States of America. Leader of the opposition, Dr. Gordon Friday, today expressed a concern for residents in the Grenadines, whom he said are being severely affected by water shortage due to the ongoing drought conditions. In a telephone interview with SVG TV News, the Northern Grenadines MP said this year there has been the worst year since ever for residents in terms of water supply, which has been depleting rapidly. So no, because we are really in a drought situation the last several weeks, you know, no rain at all. People are um, people run out of water, and the people they normally would get from, which is what we've been doing here traditionally, um, they are also running out of water. And um, you know, a friend of mine just called me this morning. She said the first time ever that she has run out of water, and she's out of water now. And she, you know, she's trying to get from another family member, and even that is difficult. So you could imagine difficult it is for people who. Uh, I turn to every source and they, everybody else is saying that they don't have to give. You know, normally for me, I give water during this time as well. But I ran out of water myself three weeks ago, two weeks ago, um, and had to get um, from someone else. Dr. Friday is appealing to the Central Water and Sewage Authority to intervene, noting the importance of water to daily life and the fight against COVID-19, as hand washing is being stressed to prevent the spread of the deadly virus. We need an immediate solution. The CWSA need to do something to bring water here as an emergency measure. People can't live without water, especially now in the time of COVID-19. We have to maintain the hygiene practices and um, just for normal use. And CWSA, it is their responsibility. They should be providing water here for uh, the people in the Grenadines. Looking ahead, Dr. Friday said that the CWSA needs to put measures in place to ensure the Grenadines do not suffer every time there is a drought really extremely dry. So many people are telling me that they're out of water and they can't get from neighbors, they can't get from friends. We have to uh, find a, an immediate solution to that crisis too. But in the long term, our plan for how we're going to avoid these things from happening. It can't be that we are, you know, that is our destiny or is that our lot that we should always be having to worry about water during the, the dry season. We have to solve that problem for the Grenadines. 
Meanwhile, CEO of the Central Water and Sewage Authority, Gaff Saunders, gave the assurance that the Grenadines is not forgotten during this period of water shortage. SVG and several Caribbean countries are currently experiencing drier than normal conditions, prompting the CWSA to enact water rationing measures on the mainland to deal with the impact of the current conditions. The Grenadines Islands, on the other hand, rely on a mixture of rainwater harvesting, desalination plants, as well as the sale of water by ships. Saunders said they are fully aware of the situation in the Grenadines and have implemented measures to provide water to the residents. Highlighting what is done for the island of Beckway, Saunders said the CWSA has sent trucks to the island on three occasions so far, with another trip scheduled for tomorrow. We understand the situation. We understand the shortfall that, you know, that there is, and we are going to do our best to try to, to make up that shortfall. In the, in the circumstances and, and what we are doing, basically in, in, the, in the situation that we have in Bekwe, that we take our vehicles down and we assist in the, in the collection and distribution of water on island to make sure that persons are not, you know, left without water and persons are not, um, do not have to pay exorbitant prices for, you know, for water distribution in Bekwe. Because I understand that that is what happens. Persons go and collect water and they sell the water at, at, at exorbitant rates because of the transport, you know? So that is, um, so we will try our best to alleviate that all over the island. The current situation as it relates to COVID-19 has had an impact on all sectors, including the CWSA. Saunders said despite this and other issues, the authority will do its utmost to ensure the water supply is available to everyone. Because I think I, 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 our schedule, we would like to go every week, but certainly every fortnight we'll be going. But the, the issue is the availability of staff and, and vehicles and so on, given the, the present situation with the COVID and our, our extreme stress on mainland. As you know, we, you know, we have shortages and you know, we have to ration and so on. So that will have to fit in the overall schedule, but certainly... We recognize the Grenadines as an area that requires a lot of attention, and we will be doing so, you know, shortly. You know, so we have a trip planned for tomorrow, and most likely we'll be doing another one again next week as well. In reference to the Southern Grenadines, Saunders said there exists a desalination plant in Canawan, which is being used to distribute water to residents. However, they are experiencing some difficulties in getting water to Union Island. Canawan, the situation is a little different. The, 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 the developers on island, they have a desalination plant. And the plant is used to collect and distribute water to residents there. Um, simply done by the developers. Um, Union Island, there's, um, there's a catchment on island and there, there's some distribution going on there but that is um that is as far as it as it goes there the situation there is also requires some some urgency but we are limited in terms of what we can do because of vessels availability of vessels to take water to Miro and to the you know the other southern grenadine islands in other news the st martin secondary school will begin online classes for all of its students next monday april the 20th the school said on Wednesday that the timetables and other information will be available on the Facebook page from Friday. Students can access their classes by logging on to the e-learning forum on the school's website. As a lead-up to the classes, the school will be hosting a series of parental meetings on the Zoom video conferencing platform beginning today with parents of Form 1, 2 and 3 students between 6 and 8 p.m. The other meetings will take place tomorrow for parents of Form 4 students from 6 p.m. and parents of Form 5 students from 7 p.m. Information on the meeting codes and other links to join the meeting are available on the school's Facebook page. The meetings will appraise parents on how they can assist their child to achieve success in an online environment. In its quest to ensure the safety of the nation's roads, the Traffic Department of the RSVG Police Force continued to clamp down on incidents of reckless and dangerous driving.
A news release from the Police Public Relations Department said consequent upon the circulation of a video on social media showing a number of motorists driving along the Arnesville and Sand Hill Public Road in what appears to be in a reckless manner, the Traffic Department subsequently launched an investigation into the incident. The department said upon completion of the investigation, the police have instituted procedures by way of summons against Javon Jardine, a 23-year-old of Mount Pleasant, Tija Dean, 21 of Prospect, and Jelani Douglas, 25 of Rockies, for reckless driving. They are summoned to appear at the Magistrate Court in Kingston on April the 17th, 2020, to answer to the complaint. The incident is said to have occurred on April the 11th, 2020. Head of the Traffic Department, Superintendent of Police, Kenneth John, is advising all motorists to drive with caution and exercise due care and attention at all times, noting that all acts of reckless and dangerous driving will be prosecuted according to the law.